Hello there, and welcome to the 18th episode of Creating Heads in Fusion 360. In this episode, we are covering how to create the upper eyelids and the eyeballs for a model. Let's begin. First of all, let's select our edge around the upper eye by either double clicking or shift selecting the desired edges. And then by using our alt drag technique, let's create some new surfaces, beginning with dragging away from the face, then dragging back towards the face, and finally using the pinch tool to assure that the edges will join neatly. You will have realized that this is an identical procedure to the one that fruited the lower eyelid, so that should have been fairly easy. And just like what was done previously, we need to weld the edges at the corners of the eyes. So press W or open up the weld vertices tool and join them methodically. This shouldn't take too long. Pan around if it makes it easier to select the vertex you're trying to weld. Personally, I have my fusion preferences set up for the SolidWorks panning system. It's just one that I got used to a long time ago. It uses the middle mouse button to orbit and control in the middle mouse button to pan around. Give it a try if you're a beginner. Uh, I, I think it's a bit more intuitive. Um, and now the name of the game is trying to create the curvature for an eyeball to go into. It would be ludicrous to believe that you could do this without an eyeball in position, which is exactly what we're going to bring in. However, try to create a fluid curvature before you introduce an eyeball into the equation. It's, it's a task I'm setting you, one which I often set myself just to test my visualization skills. As you can see, the eyelids are not smooth curves on my model, so that's something that needs to be changed for me. Take as long as you need, but remember when the eyeballs are introduced, the model will most likely need to be updated, stroke adapted to fit, so don't spend forever trying to make it perfect. In my experience with estimating the eyelid shape when modeling heads in CAD, a very niche skill I know, I've often found that I never put enough curvature into the model. The thing is, eyeballs, human eyeballs, are spheroid. They are spherical to an extent, but the lens and cornea at the front of the eye make the shape of them slightly pear-shaped, as in shaped like the fruit. This is a detail that I don't include in the model, I use spheres instead, hence the eyelids on my models uh, have more curvature. Um, although not so much that it's blatantly obvious. And um, we're now speeding up to 400% just for some slight adjustments around the eye socket and brow. So that looks pretty good. Yeah. And now I seem to make a couple of planes named the sagittal and the transverse plane. Essentially, the sagittal and transverse planes are imaginary planes that intersect the human body. Just have a look on Google Images. But I was applying these planes using precise measurements with the intention of using them to locate the eyes. However, I believe they were a waste of time since the model wasn't perfectly accurate to human scale. We all make mistakes. Now we're going to make the eyeballs. So uh, select the Create Sphere feature and select the plane you want to draw it on. Any plane will do. Then change the diameter to one that is appropriate for the model size. Basically, all I did was Google the diameter of an eye and then punch that value in since we are modeling at roughly one to one scale, assuming our canvas images were scaled to the right size when we initially did them. The diameter at one to one is 24 millimeters, um, so just to let you know, and move the eyeball over with the modify tool when you're ready. Take your time and get it right. You might find that the eye is too large or too small, and that essentially means you, your initial canvas image wasn't scaled correctly. Not the end of the world, just create a new eye that looks appropriate to the size of your model. And again, we're going to speed through some changes. So after finally setting the eye in position, we can adjust the features to match. Although the eye does look too deep at the moment. It's more difficult to select at the moment. So that's something we will change. 
Yeah, like I said, the eyeball I've created is interfering too much. So after selecting finish form, I'm rolling the timeline back before the head was created and creating a new eyeball. This will still be able to be seen when we re-enter our head model, but it won't be editable, so it should be a little easier to model with. Sure, it takes some time to get, uh, like, to set it up, but it saves you a lot of time later on. So essentially, by by creating the eye before we've created the face, the sphere we can't interact with it, and that's beneficial for us um, because it means that when we're modeling just the head. Uh, and just doing the eye bits, we're not accidentally going to click the eyeball instead and drag like the eyeball into a weird shape, which we certainly don't want to do. So we can now re-enter our head model and check the accuracy of our eye before continuing with the model. It looks good. So again, we are going to speed up. So this is now at 400% speed, just so you can follow along for the rest of the video. Um, it will be eyelid adjustments with the goal of matching them to the sphere of the eye we've created. It shouldn't be too hard for you now, so put some music on and crack on when ready. I'd like to use this time just to give you all a big thanks for still watching. I hope there are things that you are still able to learn from me. And again, apologies for my voice. Same as last time. Apologies for the brief break in audio there. I had a bit of a coughing fit, um, so I had to cut that out, obviously. Um, yeah, so essentially for the rest of uh, the episode, we're just going to be working around the eyes, uh, on the eyelids mainly. And you want to work uh, in to out. When I say in to out, I don't mean the, the inside side of the eye, as in referring to the one that lines up with, that's closest to, to your nose or the center of your face. But I mean work from the center of the eye outwards so fix the bit of the eyelid that's um that lines up with the center of the pupil first and then work towards the corners of the eyes um and i think that helps personally um that's just i guess my go-to um but everyone i don't know learn learn a, if there's a way that suits you better um that you find works faster because ultimately that's why I experiment with uh, different processes, um, like and different orders of how I how I do the model, um, because I don't know the perfect way to do it yet. Um, but I'm always open to to trying a different a different procedure uh, in the hopes that it will either speed things up or make things look better. But from my personal experience, I would just say work from the center of the eye outwards on the eyelids. Um, yeah. So that's about it for this episode. I hope you're still enjoying them and are still able to learn from them. Um, it's been a pleasure. Make sure to head to joyce3d.com to see more of what I can do. And thank you again for watching. Bye.